The night skies of Earth are full of clouds. I'm not talking about the water vapor clouds in our atmosphere. No, if you look into the sky upon a perfectly clear night, far off in the depths of space, there are clouds up there. In fact, the night sky is full of them. Clouds of interstellar dust that stretch from one side of our galaxy to the next. They are what cause the dimmer patches in the Milky Way, which is in fact an arm of our galaxy. And they glow spectacularly, though unfortunately just beneath the range of human vision, except a few, such as the great nebula of Orion, so bright it looks like a star. If you are familiar with the constellation of Orion, look at the sword hanging beneath the belt. What appears to be the second star? That is the Orion Nebula, easily visible to the naked eye. Fundamentally, a nebula is a cloud of gas floating about in space. They can technically be rather small, only a few AU or astronomical units, or they can be enormous, stretching across thousands of light years, such as the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, which surrounds the Orion Nebula like a great glowing red crescent. There are four kinds of nebulae, planetary nebulae, reflection nebulae, emission nebulae, and dark nebulae. Dark nebulae are very likely the most common. They are clouds of gas too far from any star to excite their molecules, so they do not shine with starlight, nor can they emit light of their own. Fortunately, the cosmos emits a lot of light, and this often makes dark nebulae visible to the naked eye, or rather, their silhouettes become visible, where they block the light of the stars behind them. Nebulae themselves are only thin veils of gas. To understand how thin, consider Earth's atmosphere. At sea level, our atmosphere possesses 10 to the 19th power of particles per cubic centimeter. By contrast, a nebula might contain 10,000 particles per cubic centimeter, more than a million trillion times less dense than our atmosphere. If Somehow, you could float in the depths of space in a nebula. You would never be able to feel it. It would not even be equivalent to the thinnest breath of an atmosphere. So how does a cloud so thin block any light at all? They are vast, far more than the distances between stars. And there is more in them than just molecular gas. There is also submicrometer-sized dust particles, which have become coated with frozen carbon monoxide and nitrogen. And there is also dust of other elements within, such as ammonia, formaldehyde, and diazonalium. Dark nebulae will not always be dark, though. Eventually, something will perturb them and cause a collapse. Clumps will grow, gravity will gather, and in time, these nebulae will become the birthplace of stars. Reflection nebulae happen when the gases of interstellar space are near stars not so near that they can be excited into ionization, but close enough to diffuse the starlight. The Pleiades, a small cluster of stars visible to the naked eye in the night sky about the size of the full moon, appears to have a thin, bluish, wispy veil around it. It is, in fact, a reflection nebula. Peering at it through a telescope reveals more of its bluish haze, but photographed with an astro camera and given a bit of time to build up light information, the Pleiades Reflection Nebula appears as a beautiful blue, reflecting the light of the hot blue stars behind it, its wispy gases tracing along as if painted by thin brush strokes. When nebulae experience perturbations, such as cosmic wind pushing molecules together, or interstellar objects creating gravitational waves, they will begin to coalesce, to clump, and ultimately become stellar nurseries. In the blink of an eye on the cosmic scale, a mere few million years, these stellar nurseries will bring about their first stars. When this begins, the stars will release radiation, and the gases of the nebula in close proximity won't just be lit up, they will be ionized. These kinds of nebulae appear to glow with their own light, and thus are called emission nebulae. There are different kinds of emission nebulae, but a very special one is an H2 region. These structures are relatively short-lived on the cosmic scale, only a few million years. But in that time, the gases within them will collapse, potentially forming thousands of stars. The Orion Nebula is such a place. 
and the famous Pillars of Creation image portrays a filamentous point within the Orion Nebula where stars are actively coming to life. H2 regions can look towering, mountainous, or filamentous. Sometimes they even look like things we know from Earth, such as ghosts, monsters, or water vapor clouds. Their vast, beautiful, and interesting forms are shaped by the forces that play upon them. When stars come to life within these nebulae, particularly large blue hot stars, they give off intense radiation and stellar wind. The radiation ionizes the hydrogen gas within the nebula, causing it to glow with its own light. But the radiation is of such nature that it actually pushes and tugs at the nebulous gases. And that force, in combination with magnetic fields and gravitational perturbations, is what gives these nebulae their complex and beautiful structure. And now we come to the planetary nebulae, which oddly have nothing to do with planets. They got their name because astronomers in the 19th century, using the best telescopes they had available at the time, thought they looked somewhat like planets. But the planetary nebula is something else altogether. It begins here. In front of you, you see a white dwarf to the right, a star that has died and blown off its outer shell. The gases of that shell race outward in every direction, often forming beautiful veils that surround the central white dwarf. Here, we are looking at the heart of the Ring Nebula, visible from Earth through a telescope. Planetary nebulae play important roles in cosmic evolution, for these are places where elements are created. The incredible force of a star blowing off its outer shell compresses the atoms within the star's atmosphere into other elements. And this is why planetary nebulae can appear so colorful or so densely filamentous. Their various elements glow with different colors and they can form complex filaments because the elements within that nebula interact differently to the forces around the star. These are relatively short-lived structures by cosmic standards, perhaps lasting only a few tens of millions of years. It is believed that one day, in the far future, our own sun will become a planetary nebula. Nebulae are beautiful and complex structures representing both the beginning and the end of stars. The sky is literally filled with them, and it is unfortunate that their light is too dim to see with the naked eye. What an amazing sight it would be if we could look up and see a sky full of wondrous colors and interstellar clouds glowing with their own lights and reflecting that of stars. But while we cannot see them with our own eyes, we do have the tools to observe them. And on Sky Story, we'll learn how. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world. In MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In Understory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in Sky Story, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button.